با درود مجدد خدمت شما دانشجویان محترم مستر تیچر محمد مهرپوی هستم مدرس این دوره و با آخرین قسمت از آخرین درس تاچستان سه در خدمتون هستم uh, Let's do it like reporting the news Unit 12 lesson D uh, Good Who keeps up with the news? Do you, I mean, do you keep up with the news, right? Do you know the names of any reporters or journalists or are there any that's anyone, I mean, any reporters or any uh, journalists that uh, you like in particular? Good. Maybe like Christian Amanpour, huh? All right. Uh, but I have, I, I myself, I, I myself, I always watch interviews with this uh, Christian Amanpour. And uh, what do you think are the most interesting part of being a reporter? Hmm, maybe getting to interview famous people or seeing the news as it's happening, right? Good. Now let's uh, see. What qualities do you need to be a, f uh, a f to be a foreign correspondent for a, a news organization? Let's make a list, then read the interview and how many of your ideas are mentioned. Okay, you can make a list of uh, qualities that you need to be a foreign correspondent for uh, news a news organization, then. We'll read the interview to see how many of your ideas were mentioned. Good. Life's work, Christiana Manpur. Christiana Manpur gained global fame in the 1990s as a war correspondent for CNN. After a short time in the studio, she returned to foreign news reporting because there simply aren't enough people doing it. How did you get started in journalism? Uh, my first job was at a local television station in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, they took a leap of faith with me. I think because they saw a young woman who was very serious about her career, uh, her career path and knew exactly what she wanted to do with her life. I was committed to journalism. I wanted to be a foreign correspondent. Today, I think that's quite unusual. So I think it was the ambition I showed, the sense of mission, the desire to improve myself, and also the willingness to do anything, go anywhere. You've said covering the war in Bosnia for CNN was a turning point in your career. Why? Hmm. That's where I really started my professional journey. I was questioned early on about my objectivity. And I was very upset about it because objectivity is our golden rule and I take it very seriously. But I was forced to examine what objectivity actually means and I realized it means giving all sides a fair hearing. Has being a woman been an advantage or a disadvantage for you? It's been nothing but an advantage. It allowed me to get uh, my foot into places where men have not been able to. Your father is Persian, your mother is British, and you grew up in Iran and the UK. How did that cross-cultural experience help you in your career? It simply made me aware from the moment I was born of different cultures. I've lived in a completely multicultural, multi-ethnic multi-religious environment in some of the most difficult places in the world i have been uh, f uh sorry i i've seen i've seen firsthand uh that you can bridge differences you can have tolerance between groups the trick is to minimize the extremes and to stick to the sensible center would you ever want to take uh would you ever want to take on more of a leadership role in a news organization i don't know i hope i'm fulfilling my responsibility to lead when it's necessary and to follow when it's necessary 
and to encourage young people who come to me. What advice do you give them? Have a dream. Have a dream, have a passion, know that there's no such thing as overnight success. And success comes only with enormous hard work. And know what? And know that the only way to be good at something is to love what you do. And the source is Harvard Business Review Magazine. All right, now I need you to pause the video and read the article again, please. And uh, then let's go to part B. Okay, let's find these expressions in an interview and what do you think they mean? Compare with a partner. The first one is take a leap of faith. Objectivity is our golden rule. Uh, give all sides a fair hearing. See firsthand. Uh, breach differences and overnight success. All right. The first one, uh, take a leap of faith, is uh, the answer is in how do you get started in journalism? This here. Let me find it. Yeah, they took a leap of faith with me. Uh huh. I think because they saw a young woman who was very serious about her career path and knew exactly what she wanted to do with her life. So, what do you think it means? Very good. It means trust. Trust without proof that someone or something will perform well. Uh huh. I'll just say it. Take a leap of faith means trust without proof uh, that someone or something will perform well. Okay. Number two, objectivity is our golden rule. Uh, what does it mean? Get it means the most important principle is to be objective and not influenced by personal opinions. Okay, as I'm not typing it, I just repeat it. Okay, means the most important principle is to be objective and not influenced by personal opinion. Number three, give all sides a fair hearing. Okay, guys, you can just uh, get back to the article and try to find them to see what they mean. But I'm just giving you the meaning right here. Uh, so give all sides a fair hearing means give everyone a fair chance to explain their point of view, mm -hmm. to explain their point of view. And see firsthand, the easiest one is like this. See firsthand means see for yourself with your own eyes. Mm, see it yourself with your own eyes and bridge differences again is quite easy it means get along with different kinds of people bridge differences get along with different kinds of people and overnight success means like success that occurs very quickly mm. success that occurs very quickly okay Part C, let's read the interview again. Uh, so you need to read the interview again. If you have a book, just take a look at your book, read the interview again. And are these sentences about Christiana Manpour true or false? You need to check T or F and correct the false sentences. We go to first one. She was unsure about what job she wanted to do. Hmm false right because she knew exactly what she wanted to do with her life she knew exactly what she wanted to do with her life number two she started her career in bosnia no it's false she started her career in providence uh, it was an island i think it it is called rhode island Number three, she wants people to believe she's objective. Hmm, true. Number four, she believes that being a woman makes her job more difficult. False. She believes that being a woman has been nothing but an advantage. Number five, her family background has helped her understand different cultures. Yes, because... Uh, I think her father was Iranian and her mother was British or vice versa. I don't remember. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Her father is Persian from Iran and her mother is British. And she believes you have to love your work to be successful. Mm, yes. Good. Guys, it was really a nice article about um, an Iranian, actually, Iranian British. So you can do the business at yourself, like uh, speaking and writing. Are you uh, are you up on the news? This is a survey your classmates, and uh, this is a survey that you do and your classmates to find out their news habits and keep a record of the answers. And then uh, tally the results. Okay, these are uh, we have four questions here. You need to answer to these questions. For example, how often do you keep up with the news? Every day, once or twice a week, less than once a week, never. For me right now, it's like less than once a week. I hate news. Where do you usually get the news? Newspaper, TV, internet, smartphone, magazines. For me, it's like internet. I don't spend my money on newspaper and magazines about news. Fuck them. Sorry, guys. Number three, what news are you uh, most interested in? Local, regional, national, international, actually, international. So you can pick any, any, uh, anyone you like. What three topics are you most interested in? Political, current events, actually this is my first one. You can pick three. Uh -huh. Science, technology. And arts and culture. I don't like sports. I don't like celebrities or something like this. Good. Okay, you can answer to these questions because you need this to write. You need this to write this writing part. Now let's go to the last part, the writing part. You need to use the information from the survey you've just uh, done to write a report about a class in uh, classes interest in the news actually because you don't have any classmates in this class you need to write it according to your own information in the survey but um, before we start let's take a look at the help notes writing about statistics is like this you, you write for example 80 percent of the students are interested in the news 80% of the class is interested in the news. Approximately 20% of us get the news from TV. The majority of students have access to the internet. About half of the class is interested in current, uh, in current events. And 4 out of 10 students read a newspaper. Okay, guys. We're going to write about surveys. And we need to do it with like statistics. So we need numbers. As we don't have any uh, like classmates in this class, and I said you have to use your own information, and you can give this like new survey, try to translate it for your parents, your family members, or if you have a friend who knows English, try to give it to your friend and ask them to answer to these questions. Then you can get some numbers, so you can write it here, 80% or approximately 20%, the majority of students have. You, you've, uh, you've, studied, uh, you've studied this before, and then try to write an, uh, like a news survey. Look, almost 80% of students in this class keep up with the news every day. About 20% of us keep up with the news only once or twice a week, and approximately two out of three students watch news on TV. See how to write this? This is about the first question. Uh, you say, for example, uh, this question, this part is going to talk about how, how uh, often to keep up with the news. Okay, you can write about the everyday, how, I mean, how many people or uh, like 80% or 10, 10 people or 80%. You can use percentage here. Uh, how many once or twice a week and how many less than once a week and how many never. You can write about three of them for each paragraph, right? The first one is about the first question. You can write in uh, three. Each paragraph can be about three answers. 
then you come to two you can write about three four number three you have just three topics so and number four it's about like eight seven eight you can write about four or five and uh, try to use your own findings okay guys this is the end of uh, touchstone book uh, number three I mean the the, uh, the green book I hope you get uh, the best out of this book and I hope to see you in touchstone four and after that we will start mindset series for uh, the IELTS you know candidates Okay, guys, uh, I hope you are feeling good and goodbye.